Damien, a, a lot of people have said that this exhibition and these paintings are a significant departure for you. Do you see them in those terms? I think I've always been like flirting with painting in some way, and uh, you know I've been approaching it kind of conceptually. Is there a starting point uh, as far as the paintings in this exhibition is concerned? I mean, is, is this is this the earliest painting? Yeah, this was you 2006. Made? So that was the that was the first one that I painted. That I spent ages on it. I kind of I painted the black and I pushed it back and forward, and then eventually I got this kind of skull which looked like a planet. And then I thought I'll leave that. But I wasn't sure about it. So that's but then after a while it grew, it grew on me. So that's the first one where I thought, okay, I've made a painting I like. It's, it's, I mean, obviously at that time, 2006, skulls were on your mind. It's not, it's, they've, been, they've been in your work for quite a long time, but this was the time you were making the diamond skull. Did you start then with the idea of a skull, or did you just start painting Yeah, that's, no, I, I wanted to paint, and I just thought I didn't know what to paint, and then because I'd done the diamond skull, I thought, right, I'll start with the skull. I started sort of painting from life. I mean, I think, you know, I used to, when, when I used to paint, I'd always be horrified by the blank canvas, you know, it's like I always think, what can I paint now? And then especially if you're looking at like Bacon's work and things like that, or Goya, you know, there's a lot of, you know, if you're using your imagination, then it's infinite. And that used to kind of stunt me and I didn't know what to paint. So when I started in the studio, I just kind of grabbed an ashtray, I had a skull lying around and I just started to, you know, lock myself into something so I could just explore the paint really. But, you know, I'll go, let's get that. Or I'll find something in an antique shop, like the shell in this painting. I found that in the in a antique shop. It's just because, it, you know, it looks sexual and stuff. And then again, the lines in this, I just did so much more to sort of, you know, to see how far it could go. In colour terms, there's very little colour, but then just a slight evocation of pink on the shell or the pink of the, of the cigarette lighter, they're, they're completely dominant. And is colour something that you're going to work with more? I think so. I mean, I had a big problem with colour always, in my, you know, in all my paintings since I was, you know, since I started, you know, when I was, even when I was a little kid, I used to just always sort of solve formal problems with colour. That's why, and that's why the spot paintings came about, really, was because I just thought, you know, to somehow rid myself of it. And then definitely with these paintings, I thought I'm going to keep it really simple when I start, which is, the, you know, the black and the white, but it's not really black, it's, it's blue. And I'm starting to bring colour in now, but, you know, whenever I bring colour in, it's just, you know, I kind of get lost a little bit because it becomes too much to deal with. So, I'm, you know, I've just got to take it slowly. Is there a feeling when you look at these now, having resolved them, that they're somehow very personally expressive, that you're revealing parts of your subconscious, for instance? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I definitely have a feeling painting now, now that I never used to have, which is that when I'm doing the painting, sometimes I, I kind of resolve sort of formal problems, but w without really thinking. Like, I, can, I wake up in the morning and I've solved something, and, and I go to the painting and I, I could carry it out and it works. Whereas I never used to do that. I'd just, you know, just all be like this sort of endless game of what should we do now. Medusa. It sits very well in the Wallace. It's, yeah. it's full of mythological paintings through there. Yeah, yeah, it's good, isn't it? I love, I love that. I, I did this painting first of all, which was the, the first one, which was called Woman of the Woods. And they were... Uh, I just started painting a figure in a bit of the way, same way I did the skull, I kind of moved to a figure. I was just painting a figure from uh, anatomy kind of manual. And then that was just a figure of a woman. And then I scratched it out and painted it and then, and then painted some trees. And then I just thought, you know, like, a, like inside the lung, you've got the shape of a, like a tree anyway. So I thought, yeah. started thinking about a tree inside somebody and then being in the forest, just like a darkness inside you as well as outside you and the two being kind of confused. So that, and then after that I painted these four, which were kind of guardians or witnesses at the birth of the Medusa or something, you know, like something you can't look at or shouldn't look at. My son said they look like Power Rangers, which I quite like now. I should have called it Power Ranger 1. <laughs> the appearance and the effect of these is quite violent. Is the process reasonably violent? Yeah, I mean, I like that. I mean, you know, in, in the paintings, there's, you know, there's, a, there's like a kind of truth to the materials. I mean, you know, because of course I've absorbed the history of like, you know, abstract expressionism and all, you know, you know, I mean, a mark is a mark. I think, you know, in the pen, you know, it's like there's none of that. You know, it's like, like with these dots on this painting, I, prefer, I painted them and when they were wet, I threw sand on them because they're in the beach. So they've got this sort of sand stuck in them. And I think all that, you know, like, you know, quite aggressive slashing marks, you know, the, 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 the violence is always contained in the marks. I always remember those photographs of, um, like, the moon when they first came out from NASA. You know, if you, if you just show a photograph of the moon, it's like, it's just, it's just it's like a, an old quarry, do you know what I mean? Whereas the NASA, they put, they put this grid on it, and it just makes you think NASA know what they're on about, because they've, they've got the NASA. It's like, a, it's like a crosses which mark a grid, and, you, and then you can go, oh, look, there's a hell of a lot of uh, large granules in A6. And so it just gives you that sort of scientific weight over the top of it. So, so which is, which is like, meaningless, ultimately. I mean, it's meaningless, yeah, but it, but it does give confidence, or it makes you know, somebody know that, it makes somebody feel that you know what you're actually, you know, what you're dealing with. So it's like an index, in a way, of different kind of marks. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it, it just defines the space, really. And, you know, in these paintings, again, it's like, you know, I'm just, just trying to paint the space around the figures as, as well as the figure, and the way that they, you know, sort of contradict each other. 
Is one of the motivations for showing at the Wallace then a, a more explicit way of connecting yourself to art history? I mean, you've always been aware of art history. There's always been references in your work, but here, you know, with a view through through the door there of uh, of Poussin and Titian and so on, it's a much more explicit link. Yeah, I mean, I think it just works. I mean, I, don't, I mean, I always feel I'm going forward, but you know, I I, I think. Uh, you know, collage has always been a great, you know, great thing for me. So I, I kind of, in the beginning, went away from painting into all this great conceptualism, and then, you know, you kind of come back round. And the Wallace is perfect for that because this is where I've arrived. What about your relationship to art history? Is it confrontational? Is it is art history a kind of resource for you or an inspiration, or is it just a oh, mixture yeah, of all? Definitely. I mean, I, I mean I, you know, I do believe the kind of Ruskin idea that art's like an unbroken line back to. Caveman, you know, um, and, and I, you know, and I think, you know, you, I, mean, I just think it's the same thing, you know. I, ha I have to believe that if Titian was alive today, he'd be, you know, doing monkeys in formaldehyde. <laughs> but I, I, did, I heard a great quote the other day actually by um, <clears throat> Picasso when he went to the caves at Lascaux, and he said, um, "There's nothing more to be said after that." <laughs> That's great. It is, David Hurst. Thank you. Thank you.